if I wanted to bend, it's gonna shitty. <laughs> And for the record, I'm almost positive, but not quite positive, that this is the exact same foam that was in that tracker. I really want the only wood in this steel to be from the deck. That's it. Fine, though. Now, this is not going to line up perfectly because of how I cut them, and that's fine, too. That doesn't have to be perfect. These rivets off. I'm going to use this very thin piece of wood to join these. And if it's sitting correct, then we can do other things and we can run that, that side panel. That panel has a fit there. That's it. Right. Run the trolling motor wire. And the trolling motor wires are going to come out somewhere here. He wants the batteries in the middle. Because too far up, I think they ran differently. Back, I've heard of people complaining that too many batteries in the back with the 50 and a deal in a boat like this. Um, did affect the planing and it did sink people so I don't want that to happen and I, was, I would think that with a full live well and a gas tank and a big ass motor like that plus people sitting mainly in the back plus two batteries would really kind of flood this so we're going to try and keep the battery center mass right at the 50 mark right next to the console will be a step up to the deck decided to reapply some tape down here to give it a little edge because after some exposure to some moisture and some rain I think the ends that had a bigger overlap didn't budge and the ends that didn't have a big overlap sort of started to come up. It was really surprising to me because the stuff is super strong but really if I want this styrofoam to last and be resistant to any sort of gasoline spill or residual mold or stupid rats getting a sense of the mold and then coming into your boat and eating it. I'm going to have to kind of beef this up. And that's how we tape for the slight bevel and that'll squish down when the subfloor is riveted on top of it and it won't implode or crush. And we have a pretty wide channel down the split to for water just to go in and out. So this is gator skin. So it's very similar to what you would find with uh, any sort of like sea deck or, or another application like it. What the, the deal is though, this stuff is this is a a light gray. They have darker gray. They have black. I think uh, hopefully they'll come out with like a camel green. I think that would be like tremendously successful for them. But they have uh, fairly neutral colors in stock, to my knowledge, at this point. And they're pretty nice. Um, I'll explain to you in a little bit why I chose this stuff over something like Sea Deck or any sort of that, like teak decking. Right now, we're going to apply it to the areas shown and get that going. Okay, right here, see, um, when you get a roll or whatever you get in strips, it'll have one section where there's no adhesive, and you want to be able to hold that section and peel back part of the adhesive. This is 3M backing, very strong. Once it sticks to aluminum, it will never come off. And somebody asked me earlier if this can go onto uh, wood. Absolutely, with an adhesion promoter or if you're like uh, resin coating your deck and right when the resin's it's stick, it's thickest and stickiest and you apply this on there, it's like a, it's a solidified bond and it, it will legit never come off the wood. It'll rip the wood face off of it before it'll ever come off it and so yeah, you can you can do that a few different ways, but it sticks to everything that you could definitely use in a in a conventional like DIY boat build like this. Let's 
So we pull for the corner. I already pulled this. Why it's all bubbly? They don't send it. This sends nice and clean like this. Just so you know, but you pull this. I pull them back. I make sure I touch the tip when I'm lining it up. I mean that that blank tip is the is the best tool you have here to make sure it's about as lined up as it's gonna get. So this is not perfect because this is not straight. This is about as good as we're gonna get it. So we're gonna go ahead and press that down. I used 1 8 inch rivets because of their low profile to join the two pieces together, but once I attached this to the sub floor for structural reasons, I used 3 16 which gave it kind of, you know, a bigger profile and that was going to stick out underneath the gator skin. But what I did is I just cut a little slit right there to air out the, uh, the bubble there and then formed it around with the pliers. The edge here, that's your, that's the non, the non stick edge is kind of where you want to press against if you're going to be layering it like this. Um, strangely, it almost sits because the sub floor sits lower than before because there was a three fourth inch piece of wood. One thing I forgot to mention before is that you need to clean the aluminum or at least clean the surface, if, even if it's painted. And uh, I'm just prepping this aluminum, and right now I'm using acetone to get off the rest of the contaminants on it after I hit it with a wire brush. Uh, acetone is the one step you need to use before you apply it to any aluminum surface. Stupid crack messed up my cut. Uh. It'll still be all right. That box, after pulling all the gator skins out, I saw it had activator, like adhesive activator wipes. So it's already been prepped. And uh, it also said to use protective gloves, but since I've already messed that up and kind of went along my way here, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, wipe this surface clean with it. Heck man, could have used this stuff on the, uh, and then it says, the glove wipe the area of the product. Allow five minutes to dry. Do not touch area you have wiped with activator until, or you will contaminate it. All right, so let's let that dry.
you see pressure cracks right here. And what that really means is it was lacking support right here. So we'll put another bracket to go against this flat spot here. So I think because it's going to complicate too many things to not do this step, I'm going to go ahead and just get this all ready and attach the seats and get this all carpeted in like it used to be. We just have to redrill new holes and we're going to put a spacer underneath to give this lip overall more strength, likely a piece of tubing or something just to give it a little bit more gripe so there's not so much torque on the seat and on this little thin sheet of aluminum itself this boat really was built very very meagerly like all right i think the subfloor came out really well in terms of the gator skins going on the way it did and putting to the contour the way it did, putting up with all the the rivet up prints and, and getting around that issue. Everything is stuck. And really that stuff is never gonna come off. I at one point in time had to actually peel some off of my smoker craft front because I, I, I applied it wrong. And it took me like a day or so to get it off with a bunch of goo gone and a bunch of other stuff. It was like terribly almost impossible. Like I really had to try. It was a process. It's not something you just pull off even with moderate like pulling strength. We're gonna put some sort of a trim here kind of like on a car on each section here, but that'll be unique and that'll be a little bit down the line. I wanna do something that, that embroiders the TV Nation logo. The thing I told you, a big thing we were waiting for on was the ability to put the console back in, which needed the subfloor and then needed the seat. This is just a preview of what's to come. I'm not gonna to get too far into this because this will be next video, but um, I just say we're, we're on the winning end. Finally, it doesn't feel so totally um, useless. I have some struggle videos, including one coming up where I was experiencing severe burnout and you can tell that's coming up also, because I think that's a part of anybody's build and you need to actually see that video. What I do want to talk about very briefly is sea deck. A lot of people ask me, why don't I use sea deck? And that's, it's been a redundant question in a lot of videos. Um, so I want to address it right here. I did address it in the, in the previous video, but I think my channel wasn't trending near as much and people have not seen that video, but this is sea deck and this is very nice looking stuff. Keyword looking. I actually put this on my on my skiff on the subfloor. Which this stuff really it's only advantage over gator skin is that it's cosmetically very pleasing to look at, and that's about as far with respect to what it is, that's about as far as it goes, okay? Um I saw a month, I saw wear in about a month. Uh a matter of weeks. And that, I mean I do fish uh I guess fairly more than the average person would fish. Um, but I, I still think for something that cost me about 160 plus dollars plus shipping, so it was like closer to 200 bucks um, for, I think it was like a four by five roll or a four by six roll. It wasn't very big, but it was a lot of darn money. When you can spend just as much money on this and get about the equivalent. The major problem is if I was gonna pay that much money for this, why is it wearing in a month? Like what, what is this problem? So these little, these little kind of basketball grips, like the wind knob like style stuff on it, those wear fairly quickly and then it starts to stain. And uh, really, if I want to pay that much money for something, it shouldn't be doing that stuff. If, if I, I mean, so you really, if you're going to pay for this, pay, pay all that money for it. Pay for all that money, knowing because it's going to look nice, and then that's it. It is not high performance stuff. It is not. It is meant for uh, the person out there on the water trying to look pretty, or for somebody with too much expendable income that they can just replace this at any time once it starts to wear out, because it will wear out very quickly. This, on the other hand, is high performance stuff. This stuff will not fade. The the non-skid texture on it will not like start to wear out in a month and who knows when it'll start to wear out as I, I, I use it on most of my boats and there's really no cosmetic change um, to this. This is neoprene rubber. Okay, look in this, honestly, how, how long, this is foam guys. How, how, honestly, how long, you can question yourself how long you think it's actually gonna take before this starts to degrade in the sun. So if you put this stuff on your boat and you have your boat sitting outside, don't expect even really a season of marginal use from it before it starts to degrade significantly. But this stuff is legit recycled neoprene rubber with UV inhibitors directly into the stuff itself. And so what this is, is extremely robust. Like it's, 
it's the it's the best stuff on the market so this is tested out tried and true in the salt water conditions put on boats that are just sitting in the harbor like commercial fishing boats sitting out in the harbor with no cover over them in the salt water and constantly exposed to the elements all weather conditions and then and it doesn't actually see any sort of wearing or tearing or discoloration or cracking until like six years later so yes i put an aluminum salt floor in this boat because I want this boat to last. I built this boat to last. That's that's the thing about it. I mean, you gotta think about it. a lot of boat companies have different intentions. Um, only a few of those boat companies actually make boats that'll last. And that's like in their best interest because they want you to buy the next model. You know, they don't if the boats last forever, then that's that's kind of a loss of profit to them. Kind of like, you know, that's historic through business. But right here where we're trying to make this boat to last, that's the end goal. That this boat will last another thirty years after we're after we're done with it. Or you know, however much however much time we can get out of it. I want something that's gonna last him that long so really this stuff as long as he keeps it shaded this is going to last him as long as the subfloor is going to last him. I mean really when you when you when you yank these boats apart the only thing that lasts in a boat is the aluminum and the styrofoam if a rat hasn't got in there and started chewing it up and making it into a bunch of little balls the styrofoam and the aluminum parts are the only thing that actually last out of a really really old boat and i i take that in heart so i want something to last equally as long you're going to put aluminum subfloor in and then you carpet it. No, that's just going to be a pain. You're going to end up dealing with this stuff. Or if you put a cheap uh, deal like this, it's also going to result in, in the same problems. If you're going to put this on a wood subfloor like I did with my Smoker Craft, which came out massively successful and I love it, make sure you put um, the right type of uh, stuff on it. Make sure you resin coat that wood so it's so it's more or less bulletproof as a source because this stuff will likely outlast the wood and you don't want it to be that way where like the carpet last about as long or it doesn't outlast the the wood hatch itself where this stuff will outlast everything so if you're going to go ahead and do a wooden subfloor make sure you you preserve it the correct way so this stuff and the wood subfloor can actually last and i think that's that's really beneficial because and all the other subfloors we've done we've done the carpet which is nice it's a covering thing it's nice so you have something to step on but it you know water goes right through the carpet right into the wood and obviously we preserve it so it stops that but um you still get overall degradation to that to the platform. It's not near like this where no water gets through it at all, except for a drain port, which we have to make one there, and that's also something we're gonna do. Very happy about the subfloor. It really makes a big difference in your boat build when you do the subfloor correctly. And we just have everything mapped out here. And the next video will likely start incorporating the wires and the struggle that that's actually happened. Uh, we'll start doing some stuff like that. And then we're really gonna get hard on this back deck once we tie the rest of this up. But Front to back is how we're going to move this. I still am progressing on this because it's a big, wondrous mess of of stuff. And uh, it's all coming. I think we're really over... Like, I feel better about the boat now that we're getting a lot of progression. We were just so stagnant because of all the repair work. This, but, because we had to do so much things. It was the frame was put together like crap. Everything else in here went to crap, regardless of how it was put together. And so we just so much restructuring of a restoration... This was not just like a clean slate conversion where it went a lot faster. We would have already been, the deck would have already been on. It was just, that's what you got to get yourself into. Know what you're getting yourself into when you do something like this.